Hello everyone, good morning. I'm writer coach Tony and welcome back to one of my um, thesis writing tips for you today. Uh, before I start, I would like to uh, give a shout out to all my frontliner friends. Um, keep safe guys and we're always praying for you every day. Um, uh, I hope you always have the energy and the patience and the determination to to face um, this pandemic we're we're confronting right now and we're always praying for your for your safety every day uh, so today um, I'm going to answer one of the questions uh, which I picked from one of my clients and he asks he asked um, how do you improve your writing skills it's a very common question usually I receive it from uh, people who were English who are uh, whose first language is not English so that's very understandable because like me my first language is not English English is already my third language uh, my first language would be my um, the, the dialect that we had in the place where I grew up which is Bisaya no? Cebuano and then my second language would be the mother tongue, uh, the official language in the Philippines, one of the official languages in the Philippines, which is Filipino, which is actually 90% Tagalog, no? but it's Tagalog, but uh, they call it Filipino right now because uh, it, it has mixed other languages, but the truth is it's really 90% Tagalog. Um, and uh, English is my third language. Uh, which I started learning when I was still in preschool. So, and in the Philippines, we have um, uh, English TV shows, and we have many books around in English, and people can speak to you in English. That's why, even at an early age, we have already been exposed to to the language. So, um, as a kid, I was able to learn the language through osmosis, and of course, through school. So let's go back to the uh, guy's question. This, this is geared for those who are writing uh, the research papers. No? So this is uh, how to improve your writing if you're writing research papers. So I think my, my number one uh, advice would be uh, read. You know, the, I think the reason why I can write well, you know, based on what other people say, uh, because they said, oh, you can really write well. It's because I read. I re I've been reading a lot since I can remember. Um, so, I think I was six years old, I was already reading the dictionary. And then, I gravitated to the encyclopedia when I was around 10 years old. So, uh, and I was reading English stuff. You know? So, English dictionaries, English encyclopedias. So... Uh, that's where I really got the language. I mean the vocabulary, but I think I got the the language. I mean the flow of the language, the ear for the language by reading literature. So up to now, I read one non uh, one fiction book. So right now I'm reading um, Anton Chekhov, the stories of Anton Chekhov. So the, the English is is. Um, it's a bit dated. It's just a translation because if you know, Anton Chekhov is a Russian uh, playwright and a short story writer. So his work was translated into English. So that's what I'm reading now. Um, so it would be very advisable that you read um, fiction if you want to have an ear for the language. Uh, but if you're doing research work, then you can start reading journals, um, newspapers, magazines, uh, scientific blogs, because that's where the formal aspect of the language comes from. So in other words, uh, continue reading in the language you want to learn. So right now, I'm starting to learn Bahasa Indonesia, and I've been studying French and Spanish for 10 years now. Every day, I make time to read, even for 30 minutes only, to read... Um, uh, in that language because that's the only way we can learn the vocabulary how they structure the sentences so 
That's very important. Okay? So read, read, read. No? If you don't read, then um, I don't think you'll develop a great proficiency for writing. Um, otherwise, uh, you'll be writing at a, uh, maybe at a good le uh, a certain level, capable level, but not as you know fluid as you want to. If you really want to improve your writing, uh, why is it important? Because um, it builds your vocabulary. You learn why certain words are used here and not this word. Um, so you'll learn the nuances of the English language. And then you'll also observe sentence construction. Because, you know, if you studied grammar, which I'm sure you did, because if, you, if, you, if you're a Filipino, you've been studying the English, uh, you've been studying English grammar since, I don't know, since grade one, no? So you've been learning and learning slowly, so you know there are many sentence structures. So there are many ways to to express yourself without following the subject verb flow. No, you can you can start with the verb first and then go with the. But uh, I mean, you can jumble the sentence and still be understood. So writers do that to make it sound more, uh, to break the monotony of the essay, to make it more compelling to make it sound more dramatic. So it really depends on your purpose. So if you know how to to observe different set, uh, to formulate different sentence constructions, you'll achieve the effect that you want from your whatever you're writing on. Uh, I So number one is to read. Number two, I think you should practice writing. So if you have a journal or if you have a laptop, you have a diary, you write. You write, you express your feelings or um, express your opinions on certain issues if you want to let the world know it great fine if you don't want then you can just uh, write on it and then um, there's a an app I use called Grammarly Grammarly will correct it but I think Grammarly is too strict but anyway um, at least you have a guide uh, because Grammarly is a good guide I like it Other, uh, my only complaint is that it's very very strict um, because of course um, even if I write in English um, the cultural nuances also come into play because since I'm Asian and Filipino um, although we speak English we have we use certain words uh, certain phrases that only Filipinos can understand like for a while or actually you know we use those words um, but it's culture based and um, I don't think it's really bad because it would um, because uh, for me language is a living organism it's not dead you know? so every every person who gets into learning a certain language will put his or her stamp onto that language so um, it, it doesn't mean that we're bastardizing English it just means we're enriching it we're putting um, our cultural stamp into that language no? so um, there are many phrases uh, that Filipinos use English phrases that only we can understand and foreigners will like raise their eyebrows like, well, why are you using that uh, but it's more of a cultural thing it's a cultural thing so number one I suggest you read number two I suggest you write in a journal and you use an app a grammar app I use Grammarly to check uh, the grammar of your work um, then of course you also read novels uh, literature for you to develop to develop an ear for the language if you want you can even watch um, movies right? if, uh, there's a lot in Netflix um, then you'll be introduced to the world different worlds of English um, the African Americans speak in a different way even the white Americans mm -hmm. you know, from nor from New York to Texas to California, California, they speak um, uh, a different accent, and their the words they use are also different, no, to mean something. Uh, British English also is also different, and so is English that is used all over Asia, from Singapore to India to the Philippines. Um, all of us have contributed something to the English language. So if you want to develop an ear. For the language in the way we speak it in the way we write it then 
uh, you can immerse no in the culture of that country of that country who that speaks in English so you'll understand um, because for me even the Australian accent the accent of the Kiwis the people from New Zealand um, I have a certain difficulty listening to uh, understanding it because again the accent is different and of course again even with Australians they have many words in English which only they can understand because uh, yeah it's a cultural thing as I said before then the more you read the more you encounter uh, idiomatic expressions now you encounter riddles you encounter sayings now you encounter cliches um, in writing it's advised that you do not write cliches but if you do not know that this phrase is a cliche you might be including it in your work because the idea there is for all, always for someone to come out with fresh ideas fresh um, interpretation of emotions like love or wealth or anger so um, if you're a good writer you try to avoid writing in cliche and just use your own fresh approach to the material so when I say idioms it's like um, it's really I know um, idiomatic expressions oh god I, my, my mind suddenly went went black but there are many idiomatic expressions uh, so let's let's look so it's in English uh, like, match made in heaven um, have the hearts for somebody love at first sight you know so those are idiomatic expressions so every language has that English also has it so the more the more you know it uh, and the more you learn the language the better uh, for you okay uh, sorry about that uh, my my dog <laughs> my Shih Tzu just walked he was in he was down on my feet and he moved so camera moved. sorry okay where are we okay next so how do you know how do you uh, learn how to write well so you read you write in a journal you develop an ear for the language by watching different people speak in English no? when I say people it could be African Americans it could be British English it could be Singaporean English English from India English from the Philippines you know so or English from California English from New York English from Missouri English from the Canadians the Australians so all of those people they all speak English but they have they have put their own stamp on the language so um, if you want to be a good writer and you want to communicate communicate to a certain audience audience you have to know um, the cultural nuances in English of that of that um, of that group you are writing for um, I also suggest you outline your thoughts um, so before you write you, you say oh this part is the introduction of course this has to be an introduction then the main body and then the conclusion that's the most basic outline no? introduction main body and conclusion um, the introduction has to be very catchy um, people we read a lot you know so a lot of stuff if you don't catch our attention uh, you will lose us so you're given like three seconds to write something great otherwise people will move on to the next article and I'm also guilty of that you know? if I don't like the headline I don't like the introduction I move on when I buy the book if I don't like the first two pages I close it then look for another book that's just how I decide it's just um it's just, I'm just exercising my my right as a consumer because I'm going to buy the book so I might as well see if I enjoy the the first two pages so, it's, so the introduction part if you're writing anything is very very important the main body that's where you outline your thoughts so there is coherence coherence means uh, you, you're not flying in all directions so, you, so if you're talking uh, it's, just, it's like it's just like color coordinating everything so you put all reds here you put all blues here you put all yellows here so that when the reader reads your work he can see the flow so it has to be coherent concise is the next one it has to be 
don't make it too long, you know, because as I said, people have no patience, especially now. So that's be direct to the point, well written, and as compelling as you can want make it to be, because you want to. So you you your introduction has latched onto their interest. Your goal now is for you for you to express your your ideas to them if you're presenting an argument. So if you take too long, people will like wonder and go to the next article. So make it concise. So again, make it coherent, make it concise. And then of course you go to the conclusion part. So it can be just two to three sentences or maybe five uh, paragraph to just complete, to just conclude your main point, what you just said, and then to drive in again your main point of your article or whatever you are writing. Uh, so, and finally, I think it would be best if you can find a mentor, no? Someone who can edit your work, someone you can trust, someone who will not destroy you, no? Someone who will build your your confidence in writing English. Um, I did I did have many mentors. I was very lucky. I had many teachers in school who helped me. And then when I, when I, started, when I started working, I also met a lot of editors. Um, who would give me advice. So always remember that their advice is not personal. It's not about you. It's about your work. So the goal is for your work to look great. It's not that they're not criticizing you as a person. They're criticizing your work. So I learned that early on. So I even if they criticize it, <laughs> sometimes I get pissed off. I just think, okay, they're trying to improve your work. They're not criticizing you as a person. Um, so with that, I hope you learned something. From me today on, a, on my tips on how to improve your writing skills. Please subscribe to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, and please, please, please subscribe to my channel. Um, thank you very much. Till my next vlog on writing tips. See you. Take care, everyone.